This is episode one of my diesel generator build. And what you're looking at right now is a Perkins diesel engine. Model number 103-15. And there are many reasons why I chose this engine. And I'll kind of give an overview of those as well as the basic design of this engine. So let's get started. This is a 1.5 liter direct injected under square diesel engine. I chose it for all of those reasons. I like direct injection over indirect and I like under square versus over square. The way I found out about this engine was a couple years ago when I purchased my New Holland 485 skid steer. It was not running when I first got it. That's the only way I could afford it. These little things are expensive. As you can see in there, if you can recognize it, it's got the same exact engine in there. This one is orange or yellow I should say. That's because it is a Caterpillar engine. Well when Cat bought out Perkins they painted it yellow and sold it as a cat for a while. The cat model number is 3013 and then later Caterpillar moved on to call it the C 1.5. I'm not sure if cat still sells it but uh, I know Perkins does and while it used to be a Perkins 100 series as in 103-15 dash 15 now it is a Perkins 400 series same exact engine with uh, some different emissions garbage on it currently but this engine is neither a Perkins nor a Caterpillar engine all the credit can go to a little Japanese tractor company called Shibara this is really a Shibara engine and Shibara I believe designed and started producing these in the 80s so they've got a long production run from the 80s to current day which is good for parts availability uh, and you know it's a strong design if it remains unchanged over 30 years that's one of the reasons I like this engine. And the other reasons was, well, I've got the same engine in my skid steer and I like minimizing the varieties of components in my equipment. That's a useful task when you start to think about keeping an inventory of spare oil filters, fuel filters, etc. You want to have as little number of different engines as you can because you could have a whole spare engine and it would cover several different pieces of equipment that you own. It's just a smart uh, KISS idea. Keep it simple. Keep as little variances in your equipment as possible so you have to stock less backup parts. So I'll give you a little image of the Perkins 103-15. I purchased this from a seller on eBay David from Florida was the seller and he put this on eBay 
because he was originally planning on using this engine in a small car project as a little diesel conversion car but his plans changed and he posted it on eBay I got it for a fair price in my opinion I've been searching every now and again to find this exact engine so when it popped up and seeing how clean it is I jumped on it the mileage is unknown but you can tell from the very clean paint and there's even paint on the exhaust manifold that this is probably a low hours engine and it's going to be nice a nice engine for my generator project the generator project basically I will be adding a shaft on the flywheel there at the end of the engine and going through a coupler and then hooking up to an ST genset a four pole generator which means you run it at 1800 RPM to get your 60 Hertz now if you buy a two pole generator then you have to wind it all the way up to 3600 RPM to get your 60 Hertz so think about it if your generator is spinning twice as fast your bearings build up a lot more heat a lot more friction and they will go out in half the service life same with your engine if you've got a lower revving engine that produces its peak horsepower at a lower RPM which is inherent of these under square engines especially diesels they produce lots of usable power and torque at a low RPM then that's a perfect match for a four pole generator you save fuel you save wear on parts and so that's why I chose a under square low revving diesel engine this diesel engine is rated for 3000 RPM versus a more square diesel engine would be rated for 3600 RPM that's one indicator that you've got a lower running engine and so this is going in my project the goal of the project will be very simple design easy to fix if there's an, ever any uh, breakdown issues it'll be uh, easy to repair because when you don't have power you want to be able to get your generator back up and running as soon as possible another goal of this will be to be an EMP resistant generator project and what do I mean by EMP resistant I mean electromagnetic pulse which could happen from a solar flare or from a man-made EMP device or a nuclear explosion and basically electromagnetic pulses or high energy electromagnetic frequencies traveling through the atmosphere can disable electronic components namely solid state integrated circuit type uh, silicone transistor electronics and in case you didn't know a huge amount of our infrastructure today automobiles computers etc they all have these components inside and there's a possibility for them all to become completely fried and useless if there was a large solar flare or EMP event so obviously with a generator you want to be resistant against this you can never be completely EMP proof because technically if you have enough EMP enough energy in your EMP that builds up current in 
conductors, enough energy EMP builds up enough current in conductors that those conductors will heat up and what could potentially happen is it heats up enough to melt the insulation on your windings and it shorts out your generator or it gets hot enough to melt the copper now that's a lot of energy especially in electromagnetic energy so is that realistically ever going to happen? No. Is a EMP resistant generator like this with an ST KISS design generator ever going to fry from a solar flare or a man-made EMP event? No. It's not going to happen. But I still say EMP resistant just because Nothing is EMP proof.